Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to number three in our series of our virtual financial classroom. Today's True Wealth Workshop is on the investment process. My name is Kevin Engbers. I'm a certified financial planner here at Pinnacle Wealth. And I'm also excited to have one of our other stakeholders, Casey Franken, who's also a certified financial planner, join me on today's presentation. Casey works directly with us as the advisors uh, in the design and building of the financial game plans. He's also extremely important in working with the advisors and building out portfolios, doing our research, uh, working for each individual relationship that we work with. He helps with the portfolio construction and, and in researching not only the strategies that we utilize through Carson Partners, but also those that we use from some of our outside strategies like BlackRock. Casey, thanks for all you do. Glad you're here. Yeah, glad to be here and excited to talk through our investment process here at Pinnacle Wealth and how we can help our stakeholders and, and all of our relationships. So excited to be here. Perfect. I think it's a great topic today. We're kind of, this whole series is going to kind of go start from back to the basics. And we're just kind of going to work through the life cycle. We're up to that point now. Uh, Nick and Ryan last month did uh, taxes. Uh, today we're going to talk about investment planning. The next topic should be on fees. That one will probably be of interest to a lot of people. But before we begin, there are some things that we need to go over just for housekeeping. Some items that you'll notice, some icons in the upper left corner of your of your screen. Um, you can click through them. Uh, this is where you're going to find some additional resources, some handouts, including the slide presentation. Feel free to download any of the resources. There's also an area where you can send us questions or or send us requests or, or anything specific that you may want uh, us to answer. If you're watching this at some later date on a recording, just email us your questions at info at pinnaclewealth.com or call our office at 605-271-6023 or you can call us toll free at 866-575-2500. Again, just send those questions to info at pinnaclewealth.com. We're going to do everything we possibly can to get you those answers or questions um, right away, get you a scheduled call. And we, you know, we want to be your trusted resource for financial advice. And now if you're watching this live, you can type your questions into the question area in that upper uh, left-hand corner. And although we're going to get you everything we can to get your questions answered in 24 to 48 hours, it is for confidentiality and compliance reasons as we're working through these types of presentations that we're not able to answer them directly during the presentation. So I hope you understand. Uh, Casey, anything else you want to add? No. no All right. We well, right let's let's get going. Uh, some of the keys to investment success. Now, many investors believe that investment success is dependent upon the ability to outguess the markets uh, in, in an attempt to either enter or exit exit at the most important times. Not to say that there isn't value in doing that. However, contrary to what many believe, the markets don't control the investment process. Investors do. As multiple industry and ac academic studies have shown, the investment process or success is largely influenced by two factors, investor behavior and emotion, and adherence to a disciplined process over time. Now, while the financial markets are unpredictable in the short term, they offer the potential to generate wealth over the long term. Investing is a long-term process that has historically paid the greatest rewards to those that um, adhere to a consistent and disciplined approach uh, one that seeks to remove emotion from investment decision making, uh, the decision making process. I know I've always kind of said over the years, and I may even stole this from you, Casey, that uh, we probably spend as much time on investor performance as we do investment performance. I, not, we do as the advisors. You're spending all your time on the investment, the investment process. But um, you know, again, according to Dalbar, which is a leading financial services marketing research firm. Investment results are more dependent on the investor's behavior than it is on the investment performance. Uh, the company's 2014 study of investor behavior stated that mutual fund investors who hold onto their investments have been more successful than those who try to time the market. Um, I know we've, we've said too over the years that time in the market uh, does more value than timing the market, unless, of course, you could always be right. But I haven't really found anybody who's got an incredibly... Um, unparalleled, perfect track record. So, um, and we'll get into that as you will specifically when you start talking about the process. Again, according to the Dalbar report, the greatest investor losses occur after a market decline. Investors tend to sell after experiencing, you know, short-term paper loss, and they start investing only after the markets have recovered their value. The devastating result of this behavior is that investors 
participate in the downside of the market and they're out of the market when it kind of comes back. So understanding the investment process, what we do on the advisor side is um, sit down. And again, Casey is very um, integral with us in that process as well. But you know, as, as we think about the process of building, for example, a custom home, you wouldn't begin constructing walls or choosing your paint colors or um, you know what what wallpaper you may want or the carpeting samples. You start with a blueprint, and that blueprint should reflect your vision for the what the final product needs to look like. Uh, you could probably do it without a blueprint, but it it there's odds are that it would not turn out exactly the way you wanted to. So developing the blueprint kind of forces you to make certain decisions to ensure that the home you build is aligned with your needs, your goals including the type of foundation, the slab, crawl space, the basement, all those things. The number of floors you may want to have, the bedrooms, bathrooms. Um, you need a lot more bathrooms now with twins. I'm an empty nester. But, um, you know, you desire, you know, where do you want the front door? Where do you want the kitchen and the windows to go? Uh, once the blueprint's complete, uh, you have a concrete plan and the footprint to build upon, um, you know, in executing your plan. So as part of our process, the advisors, we like to sit down on that initial piece and, Go through the goals. What do you want it to look like? And, of course, we turn all the data over to you, and uh, you're kind of um, our go-to for building and designing that plan. Um, then we talk it through as a team, and then we go back um, you know, to the relationship that we're working, and then uh, from the risk tolerance and all those other things, which I know you're going to get into. We come back to you, and then you kind of do the research and, and come back with a successful portfolio construction for each uh, each one of the strat- uh, each one of the relationships we work with. So, but during that construction process, you know you may make some adjustments, but you have an overall framework to follow, and accommodating any adjustments and building on your vision. Once the home's built, it will require regular care, maintenance, and updating, just like your portfolio as well. And later, you may want to make some changes, adding a screen porch or an outdoor kitchen, and it needs to be flexible. And so should the investment process. I said the investment process is very similar to that thing. You know, think of your portfolio, for example, as the place where your wealth will live and potentially thrive. It should reflect today's needs, goals, uh, while offering the flexibility to accommodate tomorrow's growth. Whether you develop and follow your own investment process or you work with a, a financial professional or an advisor or firm, certain steps are critical to pursuing, um, you know, the results that you're you're striving for. At a high level, the investment process consists of, of four primary steps. The goal setting, that's what I talked about, that we like to sit down with the advisors. Your blueprint, a formal assessment of your needs, goals. You kind of crunch the numbers. We come back. Then you get to the portfolio construction, developing the foundation and framework for your portfolio, implementing the plan. That's executing, you know, getting legs under it. Uh, and then the monitoring and evaluation again, which is where you're integral in that, in that part. Um, goal setting. I'll just talk about that before. Um, it feels like I'm doing all the talking here, Casey, but we'll, we'll get to you in just a second. Uh, the investment process begins with understanding and establishing you know, very clear and specific financial goals. This is where you establish your that blueprint we talked about. If you're working with a wealth advisor, he or she can help you identify and prioritize your objectives. And the more detail you provide about your current financial status, your goals, your lifestyles, what's important to you, your time frame, your tolerance for risk, the more effective we as your wealth advisors will be in developing an investment plan and a process that's tailored to uh, address your needs over time. And um, you know, At this process, it can differ with each advisor. However, we, we kind of have a disciplined process that we pretty well adhere to as, as our team of advisors. Um, you know, but again, we, um, we can either come up with the first step of goals or the second step of portfolio construction Nonetheless, I think that the client, the relationship should understand and be educated in the risks that they're taking when they when they are investing. So then once we get to that point, we've kind of got the plan in place. That's when it really comes back. If we have your goals and objectives, and again, we it's kind of when we send you a risk tolerance or a risk uh, RTQ score that we call it, and then you do all your little magic. So why don't you talk about portfolio construction? What, what do you go through in that process? 
Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for setting the setting the table for today's conversation. Um, that's really the more important part is those conversations and setting those goals and really making sure that the expectations are set beforehand so that we can make sure that that we're doing the best job on behalf of our of our stakeholders. So when it comes to the portfolio construction, you know, this is really where we're dividing up and looking at the asset allocation, the investment selection. Um, the wealth advisor is going to work to develop a framework for managing the assets, but then we really do want to see, you know, what are you currently doing? How are you currently invested? What are the fees that you're currently paying? Um, maybe different parts of the market that you're exposed to, and maybe we can go in and be able to give some general ideas of, you know, do you understand truly what you own? Um, I think that, um, you know, 2020 was a very important year for people to understand really what they were holding in their portfolios mm -hmm. if it did act differently than what they were expecting. So so with that, we really do go through and, you know, get that asset allocation nailed down. So we're going to be looking for, you know, how are we in equities, the fixed income portions, cash or money markets, um, real assets such as real estate, commodities, um, really any of those other various asset classes. And then also looking at how much are you in the domestic markets versus the international. So those are all big decisions when it comes to, you know, the long-term investment profile and how we're going to be able to help our stakeholders with really going, you know, towards those goals. So um, I think that the investment selection, that's really where we're going to be going in and looking for where, you know, our team of professionals and our research teams are looking to take advantage of potential areas of the market um, if our if our research is indicating. So that's really where we're at the high level portion. And then we go into a little bit more of the details and, and our next steps. Perfect. So when we're going through next, we, you know, we've already gone through, we're, we're taking a, a, an additional lens into the portfolios, looking at how we could potentially reposition. And now we're going to go into the implementation part of, of the portfolio. So we're looking into, you know, what makes the most sense for a certain relationship? Do we get them repositioned into this portfolio to hopefully be able to, to help them along the way here? Um, and just to kind of segue, I'm going to have Kevin go through and just to l explain a little bit more on what this all means to him. Sure. You've got a very seasoned professional that's been working in investments for, for multiple decades. For, so maybe just shine some light on, on your experience there. Well, you know, the reason I find you so valuable on the team here is I'm a visionary. I always have been. I, I li I'm kind of a pitcher's guy. Um, I, I know the numbers are important. I, I don't want to take away from them, but... Um, they, they tend to put me to sleep. So I, I'm glad uh, you find as much joy in them as you do. But, you know, I really like to, to see the big picture. How, what's it going to look like? And um, like I said, the numbers kind of doze me off time and time again. But, but that doesn't mean that the numbers aren't any, more, are any less important. You know, they're really what, what give the picture um, its color and its, and, its, and its shape and form. So, you know, I, I kind of like to use a military analogy. Uh, the advisor role, or at least my role, is kind of that as a general. The, the relationship's kind of the president, and they say, "This is what this is what I want to accomplish." And then they, they turn it over to the general, the professionals, and the general tries to lay out a game plan. What it's the it's the boots on the ground and the the, the the other successful parts of the of the military branches that actually carry out the day to day strategies of implementing and, and enforcing that objective. So. That's kind of why it's great to have a team approach. Um, I I know when I first started, I did it all myself. But you know, by the way, how long you been with how long you been with us? Yeah, I'll be hitting nine years here this coming November. Once we get done with that, um, like I said, the numbers, uh, the advisors have kind of a picture where they want to go. But you know, certain strategies may get a style drift, and what the advisor initially puts in place can change. That's why it's so important to have somebody like you on the team who's doing that research and looking and saying, is the j objective that, that we you've designed or we've designed with together that, that we implement, is their style drift or are they changing or has the objective shifted a little bit? And that's when it's kind of nice to say, look, this isn't matching with this client's goals. Uh, maybe we should consider looking at these things. So again, that team approach works well. So tell me a little bit more about what you do as far as that portfolio mon monitoring and and how you evaluate uh, performance over time. Yeah, so this is one of the most integral parts of, of investing, in my opinion, because 
just because you lay out a plan, um, I think that it, there's always adjustments that need to, to be happening along with that, you know, our relationships, they're going through different stages of their lives. Mm -hmm. So maybe they have a specific account that is going to be for the marriage of their, of their child or for sending their, their kids to college or, you know, looking at those specific retirement accounts that they're looking to be able to use, you know, when they do hit that, that special day and really just understanding, you know, what the purpose of each one of those accounts are. Mm -hmm. And if we need to be adjusting that over time, you know, maybe it's for tax reasons, maybe it's for, you know, being invested in certain types of, you know, stocks versus bonds or being mm -hmm. in ETFs or mutual funds, really being able to understand why each account is invested the way it is. And if there are changes that should be made to be proactively looking ahead mm -hmm. versus looking behind us and, and really trying to make sure that we know, you know, that our investments are hopefully performing as we would expect them to. And if they don't, maybe we need to make some slight adjustments to make sure that we're, we're helping as much as we can. Perfect. Perfect. So really when that comes down into a lot of our investments, um, you know, to go through the styles of it, um, this can be you know, something that could be straightforward, but I feel like for a lot of people, it can create a lot of confusion with all of the, all of the jargon that goes along with mm -hmm. investments. Yeah. So when it comes to, you know, your active portfolio management, passive investment management, technical and fundamental analysis, a lot of people, they don't understand exactly what this means. Certainly. So maybe when you're going through to, to go back to our example of building a home, you know, maybe we're looking at, you know, what, what types of goals or do we need to construct, you know, this house or this portfolio in a certain way. And, you know, sometimes the devil is in the details. Absolutely. So, you know, think about just the sheer number of decisions that go into designing and constructing a kitchen alone. <laughs> um, you know, how big will it be? How will it need to accommodate seating for four or 14? Um, we need even more kids. Is that what you're telling me? I, we, we do not have plans to, uh, to have more. We're, we're happy with our 18 month old twins. But, I, uh, you said 14 kids and I'm thinking, Oh boy. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah. But in the same regards, you know, do you need a pantry? You know, yeah. how, how many kids you have? Maybe the size of the pantry will come into play for, for feeding those kids. Um, you know, would you prefer a gas or electric range, um, a single or double oven? So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that come into play. Sure. And just because a house works for one family does not mean that it will work the same for another person. Mm -hmm. So really being able to take our investment styles and, and our our philosophy and being able to cater it. And really, you know, at Pinnacle, we use a combination of all of these investment styles. Right, right. So we do believe that over time that you know, we can use our research and, and our, you know, team to hopefully be able to provide some value with how our clients have their money invested. Um, obviously, the past is not indicative of future results. So a lot of this comes into, do you believe in the process? And are we convicted in our long term strategy, so that when we do hit difficult times, we do not deviate from what our overall game plan is, and that we're constantly monitoring and making sure that we're keeping our finger um, on the dial to make sure that we're not missing anything. But that's really why it's an ongoing process. And really, we like to utilize all of our team team members when it comes to the Carson Wealth team down in Omaha, and then our internal team here in Sioux Falls. Perfect. So, yeah. so kind of next, we're going to go through what different factors should you consider when we're looking at that process? So similar to a manager's buy-sell discipline, your, invest, your investment manager's overall process should be clearly laid out, consistent and repeatable. Mm. So when you're choosing a financial advisor or firm to assist in managing your assets, it's important that they are able to articulate that process in a manner that's easy to understand and that makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. um, as the famous Albert Einstein once said, if you can't explain it simply, you just don't know it well enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I really do think that that, is, that really resonates with how we like to be able to educate and be able to explain our investments so that our clients are feeling confident this is why we are doing this mm -hmm. and this is the long-term plan that the investments will be able to help with the financial plan to bring those two things together. So, so really just to kick it off is, you know, do we have a repeatable process? So I think that that's a really important thing to really be able to know that you know, every single relationship is going to get a very similar type of experience that we're going to be able to help them. Yeah, and even even since 
you know, for me, it's been 30 plus years in the industry. You, it's been the the nine, 10 plus, but it or nine in the 10 area. But you know, that's even changed over the time. I, I can remember when we started, um, you know, uh, and the investment process and the types of vehicles have changed significantly over time. But we were always a buy and hold. You know, that that was the main target, and 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 we joke now about it as buy and hope. Uh, and that hope is not a strategy. So that's why you got to have a process that not only has an uh, an entry time period, but wh- an exit process or as part of the research as well. So, um, yeah, and to have one, like you said, that's repeatable and that uh, you can replicate and duplicate is incredibly important. And the strategies, you need to be more mobile. You know, certainly over the last few years, you know, when I started in the in the 80s, the market was just kind of going one direction. It may have bumped a little bit other than 87, but it may have bumped up and down. But it was kind of in that normal straight up trajectory. But the last the last decade, it's been anything but that. So the, you got to have those disciplines and a well diversified portfolio. Uh, certainly not to over manage it, but be be have the flexibility. So uh, great point. Continue. Go ahead. Yeah, so I think the repeatable portion is, is very important. But then also, you know, being research driven. So mm. just because somebody has a thesis or an idea, if there aren't hard numbers and facts and trends that are, you know, really indicating that that there could be an opportunity, you know, if the research isn't there, then, you know, buyer beware. I mean, I think that if your advisor is not able to explain, here is the rationale, here is some of the, the data that we've used to make this decision, um, then we kind of go back to what Kevin is saying on the old buy and hope strategy, which we just don't believe is in the the interest of of our relationships over the long term. Mm -hmm. Um, So then really going into and segueing, you know, leveraging secular trends. So, you know, sometimes when we look at the overall stock market, some years, you know, there's a tilt to growth that maybe investors have more performance over on that side of the market. Then maybe the next year you have a tilt that people are going into value. Maybe we're looking at large, mid caps, small caps, um, international, certain sectors. So those things are going to be evolving, you know, every single day that the market is trading. Mm. And what our job is to do is we're not trying to just go time the market and day trade. We just want to make sure that we have a long-term allocation that has that overall trend that we're allocating that account and that we're confident over the next handful of years that our investment thesis gives us the reason to con- to, to continue going through with this strategy. Perfect. So just kind of an important part there. And then really just focusing on high-quality, well-managed companies. So there are, you know, there are thousands and thousands of corporations that are tr- actively traded in the stock market every day. And it's very difficult for anybody to be able to find the best stocks every time. Mm-hmm. You know, even an example is Warren Buffett. You know, even he says that he can't time the market and that he cannot be able to go in and find every single time the, the biggest winners. But I think our process is that if we're confident that these are companies that really do have healthy balance sheets, they have strong financials, they have great management teams, and that we're confident are going to be around for the decades to come, then that gives us a little bit more confidence that we invest and we are able to hold that for the long term mm-hmm. and be able to have our clients um, you know, hopefully be able to benefit along with time being on their side. So yeah, that, that really kind of comes into the focus on that. And then really just personalized allocations for individual needs, goals, and risk parameters. So this is a really big component of what I do every day is I want to make sure that the amount of risk that is in each account and where we locate these certain assets Mm -hmm. when it comes to having taxable accounts compared to tax deferred or tax free accounts. Good point that we're really making sure that we have the right asset allocation along with the asset location. Mm. So these are two different things to consider. And that's really where we come through and coordinate with our advisors. We coordinate with the clients and also with their CPAs um, and really go through to make sure that we're we're investing and helping our relationships to the maximum ability that we can with the information provided. Awesome. just a little bit on on that part, and I'll uh, I'll kick it back to Kevin, and he can kind of talk through the critical role of communication throughout this entire process. Sure, and again, while the process is kind of essential to ongoing implementation, 
uh, like you said, executing the investment strategy customized to each specific relationship or household that we work with, and they're all equally important. Um, you know, investment results, prospectuses, and reports, and and faceless you know call centers are hard pressed to answer the questions: Am I still on track? Uh, how will the current market trends impact my overall strategy? Um, you know, and, that, and that's really what the wealth advisor should be able to provide the answers to these questions. And you know, it's it's far more than just being. Uh, you call into a 1-800 number and they ask for your account number and that's all they know you by. Uh, that's why we think knowing that relationship and, and having that kind of uh, face-to-face, toe-to-toe where you sit down and you have regular meetings, you're continually evaluating the portfolio. Is it is it still meeting? Are we still on track? Are we get, moving towards uh, your targets? Um, having those proactive recommendations, I know quite frequently too you'll uh, I'll be. You'll see that I'm going to be meeting with a relationship, and you say, "Hey, it's been a while since we've we've had their RTQ. Uh, make sure they take another risk tolerance questionnaire so that we can make sure the strategies we were using are still the right ones, uh, even above and beyond changes that may be happening in the markets or in the economy overall." So, uh, it is having that that communication, which I I think is incredibly important. Um, you know, and as successful investors understand that a comprehensive approach. It goes way beyond just financial planning. It requires careful calculation, disciplines, like like you said, adhering to that repeatable process. Trust, transparency, and accountability are are certainly three important pillars that you should expect from your advisor team in order to minimize uh, or to maximize your investment experience. Trying to minimize any tax consequences that we can do as well, and by removing emotion. I know when a person tries to do it on themselves. You know, and it's more than just getting someone's historical performance and say, well, these were the higher performing ones. Uh, that's always kind of like, you know, driving your car by looking in the rearview mirror. It, it isn't necessarily what they may have done historically, but what are they doing right now and how are they positioned? And uh, so to remove that emotion of investing and sticking to a plan, uh, being more goals based as far as how we're selecting it as well. Certainly, you know, we like bragging rights when portfolios do well as as well, but it's really more, are the portfolios moving you towards your goals and to stay on track towards those goals and objectives uh, that that you've outlined with your advisor. And our process for uncovering your true wealth is through precise. It's very precise. It's personalized. Uh, We call our approach the uh, wealth design life-defined process, uh, where we design a proactive game plan to help you understand both that mythology and helping you reach a higher purpose for your wealth that that we call true wealth. So kind of just wrapping things up a little bit, you know, during your initial meeting with your advisor, you're going to get to know each other. That's what we like to do is just sit down and say, where are you at? What have you been doing? Uh, What's important to you? Um, You know, where are you coming from? Where are you trying to go? And, uh, you know, you sit down with your wealth advisor and we're going to help identify, you know, what areas you may want to improve. What, what are your number one concerns? things you may want to develop or change as it results relates to your wealth. And by reviewing your completed confidential profile, we'll we'll give that information to somebody to complete, to give us a bigger picture of who they are, what's important to them. Uh, Then we're able to determine, you know, what their risk tolerance is. We take them through that RTQ questionnaire. We look at what their long-term financial goals objectives will be, and we try to identify those. That's kind of the foundation to the wealth plan and the game plan. And then by identifying those goals and objectives, the time horizons, uh, then we establish that investment blueprint that we, uh, together with the relationships that we stick to, and we hold each other accountable to those things together through that investment process. And uh, then from there, as we've discussed, you're able to help build and design uh, custom portfolios for people. And then, again, our goal is to continually strive and work towards meeting their long-term goals. Um, you know, during that designed phase of the investment experience, our, our portfolio stress tests, I always like that when you do that, you, you take a look at somebody, what they own, you run it through, um, all our, our, our tools, all your tools and, um, uh, come back and say, look, here's what they own. Here's, here's kind of, uh, where their risk exposures are. Do they have a lot of duplications in that process? And then our goal is to ensure that the financial goals and objectives are in line with their level of comfort on taking on risks. So 
that together we can design a personalized financial roadmap uh, that, again, will help them work towards their, their specific targets. Education is the key. That's kind of why we hold these, these uh, virtual workshops. We've gone virtual, kind of an extension from the whole COVID process. Uh, we are such a mobile and, and online uh, society, that we just felt taking it to people in this process. And education is one of our core values. It's one of our core principles. Uh, we hold that very important. And then our goal is to help you make educated decisions. And once you have a thorough understanding, we're going to make specific recommendations for you to consider uh, on strategy allocations, uh, what you may need to do and, and help prioritize your personal plan so that you can live life by design and not by default. Uh, disciplined investment uh, strategies are the foundation of, of our investment management process. Um, I know uh, you take that very serious, Casey, and you spend a lot of time digging into the weeds so that it makes it easier for us as advisors to keep focused on the big picture, uh, where you can make sure, the, uh, like the duck, the, the feet are actually moving under the water. And um, uh, that takes time, and it's just great to be able to you know turn that over to you uh, not only our internal investment committee, but then to tap even the resources of Carson Partners. And I, and I think one thing that that really is a, a different differentiating um, factor with Pinnacle Wealth and why why I truly enjoy working here is that we really do base a lot of our recommendations on the comprehensive financial planning for how we will determine what makes the most sense for the investments in the account. There are, are a lot of you know, professionals in this business that are more interested in just taking over an account to manage it and that the long the long term financial plan is kind of in the back seat. And when we talk about a family index number, what that means is what is the return that that is required in the financial plan to be able to accomplish your goals? So for example, since you know we have baseball season starting up, you know, if you're invested to hit home runs, but your goals only require, you know, a single or a double, is your investment professional truly providing value mm -hmm. in the case of maybe a year like 2020 that had significant volatility and being able to know that we're trying to have our portfolio be able to enhance the plan and that those two things together, that's really what I think is the important um, things to look for when you're working with an advisor. Awesome. Transparency from your investment advisor, like you said, is incredibly important. Again, once we get your plan set in motion, then you'll define how you how you prefer we communicate with you. Is it by phone, email, mailings, or or in person? But you can expect us to deliver proactive, transparent communications and unparalleled service. You'll also gain anytime access to statements and performance reports through our portal, Client Experience Optimizer, and your wealth advisor and stakeholders will schedule annual reviews to ensure that your financial goals and objectives remain current. So to wrap things up here a little again, if you have questions, um, feel free to email them to us at info at pinnaclewealth.com. You can call us at uh, 271-6023, 605-271-6023, or call us toll free at 866-575-2500. Uh, certainly you can type your questions if you're watching this live uh, in one of the upper, in one of the icons in the upper left-hand side. Um, and we really w would love to answer those questions live, but, um, you know, for confidentiality reasons and from compliance, uh, they really prefer that we uh, just answer them after you've submitted them. And that way we can get, do a little more research if we need to and, and provide you the specific information you're looking for. So if you'd email us at info at Pinnacle Wealth, we're going to get to your, answer your questions. Our goal is to get them done in 24 to 48 hours. If again, like I said at the beginning, if you happen to be watching this because uh, you found it on the website or on our YouTube channel and you're watching, you think, well, yeah, I'd like to uh, get them a question. Even though it's not live at that point, just send it to us. We'd be, we'd be happy to sit down um, either face-to-face -face or we can do a virtual meeting or give us a call. We are recording this presentation and it will be available for future reviews. So if you're watching that at a later date, uh, email us your questions at info at pinnaclewealth.com. Or again, you can call us at 605-271-6023. I see on the slide, I forgot to put the toll free, 866-575-2500. And again, we thank you for the opportunity. We hope you found, found this um, valuable. We always have to have those important disclosures. So I'm going to leave that slide up as we bring things uh, kind of to a close. Our next topic, I, I believe we're going to do investment fees. 
I think I may want you in on that one too, Casey. We'll we'll see how that one goes. And then we'll then we're going to move on to planning for retirement. Um, uh, we're going to look at uh, living in retirement. We'll go through estate planning, Social Security. Thank you for joining us on on this presentation. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you next month. Thank you. Thank you.